Right, hello everybody. It's just another video about the um, Max, the, the Maxis takeover of our national game. Um, they're, they're still bending the knee. Um, well, actually, I've been glad to see that um, some teams aren't taking the knee, but some are. And we're going to talk about one of them teams. One of them's my team. Um, the um, I mean, the origins of this taking the knee, this Black Lives Matter. Um, organisation who started it and make no mistake taking the knee is to the Black Lives Matter organisation now this is an organisation that originates from the United States of America they openly say they are a Marxist political organisation um, they want to end British um, all traces of British history, British culture British monarchy, they really hate Britain um, they want rid of law and order, they want to defund the police, etc. Um, it, and it's funded by George Soros and the Clinton Foundation. So, um, yeah, them people aren't black. Now, um, of course, this summer it came out that it was a big scam. Yet yeah, they're still taking the knee in the English Football League. Let's take a look at a couple of clips. Um, well, actually, I've got one clip that I'm going to play now. That was Rochdale versus Gillingham. And... Um, that was the first away match this season. There's only been three league games so far and Rochdale's bent the knee um, like globally shills in every single game. And um, Gillingham away, they didn't take the knee. So I'll play that clip now. And then this Saturday, we had Rochdale versus Grimsby at home um, looking for our first three points of the season. And um, thanks to a Rochdale fan who did um, did a vlog, uploaded it to um, to YouTube on the match. He he included the footage of the taking of the knee, the bending of the knee before kickoff. And just like against Gillingham, it was the referee blowing the whistle. The referee bent down to take his knee. The whole Rochdale team took the knee, but Grimsby Town didn't take the knee. So it seems this season there's um, being a clear two fingers um, being stuck up in League Two. Um, by football teams refusing to take the knee. Apart from Rochdale. Now, um, Rochdale, yes, um, my team, I don't know why they aren't refusing to take the knee. I don't know why there's more uproar in the stadium against this because it is a political organisation. It's an anti-white organisation. Um, some would argue it's a tourist organisation because if you was looking at all the videos um, on the Summer of Rampage by Black Lives Matter, um, you saw the most alarming videos had to be said it was in America but you also saw it was it was actually mainstream media championing these thugs rioting throughout our capital city centre spraying racist on our war memorials there were Winston Churchill statue that was defaced and um, there was even the um, cemitaph where one little um, little rapscallion jumped up on the cemitaph and took a lighter to burn the Union Union flag. And let's not forget what happened in Bristol, the um, removal, um, the criminal criminal behaviour in Bristol where the police just sat back and watched the removal of um, the statue of Sir Edward Colston by a bunch of raving loony left Marxists. And um, yeah, the police was just quite happy to stand back and allow that to happen. That's all in their manifesto, the destruction of British history, British culture, and um, British monarchy, <clears throat> anything, anything, anything um, to do with Britain, they want these, Black Lives Matter want to destroy it. Um, that is quite obvious to most now. And then um, we, um, I've got some clips coming up because um, a lot of people have been sacked from their jobs just for criticising the British, the, the um, Black Lives Matter movement, BLM, which really should be renamed British loathing Marxists. Um, we've had a lot of people lose their job just by criticising them, including ex-footballer Matthew Letizier. Let's have a listen. What? Um, let's have a listen to see how he lost his job. The whole thing about I don't want to speak out because I might lose my job. Well, actually, I found that my life has improved because I lost my job. 
I don't think I've made myself particularly popular with my stance on not wearing a Black Lives Matter badge. So why didn't you wear a Black Lives Matter badge? Well, I actually did wear it uh, for one show. We were told we had to, pretty much had to wear it, otherwise, you know, it wouldn't be very good for us if we didn't. And we were told that about us a minute before we were due to go on air. Uh, and I wasn't particularly enamored with what I saw. Um, and I didn't agree with what they stood for. So there we go, Matthew Letizia, you legend. You are, you are proof to... Um... Many of us um, who grew up in grew up in the nineties, eighties, um, and nineties, um, you are proof that um, not all of our ex legends are jellyfish, like the likes of um, Gary Lineker and um, Gary Neville as well. He's another walk. Um, or oh, let's not forget Gareth Southgate, of course, who's been rewarded with the top job in English football. Um, these are all walk jellyfish, but Matthew Letizia, he's awake. Um, he didn't support Black Lives Matter and simply because um, he said in that interview he actually wore the Black Lives Matter uh, lapel on one show. And then he, then he said to um, the producers that, um, no, I'm not wearing this again, I don't agree with it. And he actually said, uh, in the full interview, he actually said he would wear any stand-up to racism badges, but he won't wear the Black Lives Matter emblem because he doesn't agree what they stand for. You heard it yourself. And... Um, yeah, Sky Sports proved to be um, not a very nice company to work for because they, um, they sacked him. Um, but yeah, Matthew Letizia, um, he's he's quite relieved to be out of that job because he doesn't want to work for the walk. Um, he certainly would not be partaking in this knee-bending bullshit. Now let's have a look at another video because of course the mainstream media have jumped on this. It's a globalist organisation. It's there to divide it's there to um, it's, it's there to accelerate the anti-white rhetoric that the, the mainstream media and the globalists are inflicting. Uh, we all know the indoctrination at school. They're basically teaching them if you're born white, you're born evil. You need to uh, replan your mind. And um, yeah, parents need to be awake of, awake to that. Ask uh, if you can't homeschool. Homeschooling your children would be the best solution. If you can't homeschool them. Um, most people can't homeschool the kids, but you can always um, just ask your children every single day what they've been taught at school. And um, if they're getting taught any anti-white nonsense, put them straight. Tell them that the, their teachers are talking bullshit. And um, yeah, um, make make it as hard as possible for them to indoctrinate your kids because they are they are doing it at every level now. Um, now the next video I'm going to show in June, summer this year, June this year, it came out actually about the um, Black Lives Matter movement just being one big grift. A grift. Everybody donated money to them from all over the world. Um, it went in the big pockets, of course, of George Soros and the Clinton Foundation, but they, um, they haven't, they've seemed to have evaded, as you would think, they've evaded being um, any rap, but um, any, any of the... Um, they seem to have got away with any of the response um, to this um, clearly being a grift, a scam, and it's scammed hundreds of thousands, probably millions, millions, it'll be millions worldwide that have been scammed out of money. Um, and it went to um, a handful of people, um, the original activists from the Black Lives, the original Black Lives Matter, which was in America and Canada, and... Um, these people didn't have a pot to piss in. Now, they're running around with seven mansions each. That's where your money's gone. And, uh, yeah, I'll show this clip. It's from uh, it's from one channel from the mainstream media that's not... I will not say it's entirely um, unwalk, but um, it's not as walk as the other channels. And, um, yes, here we have uh, here we have an American, uh, a black American rapper. I think he's, I think he's a rapper. Um... And he, 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 he was totally against Black Lives Matter from day one. As the only black member of the panel, I'm sitting here thinking, what is the correct racial etiquette these days? Do I go to you first? Do I not go to you first? We've got um, a BBC show, Question Time. Uh, I remember the, the presenter had a similar kind of topic and went to the black member of the panel for his response first. And he turned around and said, you're coming to me because I'm a black person and that in itself is racist. So I've got to be honest, I'm sitting here getting myself in a muddle <laughs> thinking to myself, goodness me, if I go to you, am I racist? If I don't go to you first, am I racist? I don't know. So can I just start with you? 
You can start with me, Michelle. That's all good. I know right. you're not racist, so no, Your no concerns here. Your thoughts on all this? Well, I, I feel vindicated because two years ago I said that this organization was a disingenuous scam, and it has proven itself to be a disingenuous scam. Yeah. The Black Lives Matter organization, this foundation in the USA, is a grift. They have received millions upon millions of dollars, I believe over $100 million dollars, um, over the, I think just in 2020, it was, it was close to a hundred million. So this organization has been capitalizing off of unfortunate deaths and tragedies and guilt tripping people to send them lots of money and donations, which I believe most people think is going to go to a good cause. And instead they are paying themselves six and seven figure salaries. They're flying around in private jets. They bought a $6 million mansion. Um, they've got over, what was it? It's written here. They have, I think, they invested $32 million in stocks in 2020 with donation money. So this is an outright scam. So when we talk about Black Lives Matter, it's important to note that this is a semantically overloaded phrase intentionally. It refers to at least three different things. There is the statement, the basic phrase, Black Lives Matter. Mm -hmm. Everybody agrees, every decent human being around the world, across the political spectrum, agrees that Black Lives Matter because all human lives matter and should be treated with respect and dignity. Mm -hmm. Number two is the organization or organizations. I think in the USA, this one we're referring to is the primary Black Lives Matter organization. And a lot of people don't know that there is an organization with founders, with people who are receiving the money. It's a nonprofit and they've been raking it in. They've been raking, raking in the money over the past few years. And as we've seen here, they have been spending it on enriching themselves. And it's, it's essentially money, money laundering. I think what they've done here is most likely illegal. Yeah, so I have to say that they would say in their own defense that they've mm -hmm. not done anything wrong. <laughs> well, you mean anyone can look at these articles and uh, I'm not going to, I mean, these numbers here, paid the baby father $970,000 for creative services, paid the brother the 840,000 for security. Fellow director was got 2.1 million dollars. This is all just in. This is all just in one year. So there we have it, and well done to that man for speaking out against Black Lives Matter from day one. Now to the white progressive liberals, they'll be scratching their heads, going, "Oh, oh, that can't be right. A black man speaking out against Black Lives Matter. If you speak of it, if you speak out against Black Lives Matter, then that makes you a racist. But he's black." <laughs> but um, yes, there's. Um, I mean, I see you in the stands at Rochdale. There's um, there's a small minority that applaud this knee bending, which the other teams have clearly ignored. They don't do it anymore. Rochdale are the ones still doing it. There's a small minority who applaud. Um, there's a few that boo. Um, I suppose the same sort of minority boo with myself included, and the majority just stand there. Um, doing nothing. Now, I imagine that the majority standing there doing nothing will be thinking, they want to boo it, but they'll thinking, they're thinking of political correctness. They're thinking, oh, I can't boo that, because people will think I'm a racist. Now, it's time uh, for them fans, it's time to go a pair of balls. And for the ones who applaud it, you really shouldn't be applauding it. Imagine what your ancestors would think. Ancestors in World War II that fought and died could you imagine if a, uh, if, um, if a soldier in World War II had a dream and he dreamt that um, after, after Britain wins, the, uh, after the World War II is won, um, he had a dream that the future in 2022 is going to involve the indoctrination of children at school, teaching them um, about white guilt. Um, Students in Scotland will have to sign a contract to say that they accept their white guilt and they know that they was born evil because they are, they are white. And that, that happened in one university in Scotland. Could you imagine if they dreamed about Black Lives Matter terrassing around the capital and um, spraying racist on the statue of Winston Churchill, putting a lighter to the Sem Union flag on the cenotaph? Um, among um, among many other things, like pulling down the statue of Edward Colston in Bristol, um, and then they dream that the um, team who are bottom 
of the bottom tier of English football, Rochdale, fielded only one white person out of the starting 11 because that's what happened on Tuesday. Last Tuesday against Burton Albion, Rochdale only fielded one person. Could you imagine if that happened? Uh, they'd wake up in a cold sweat, I would imagine. Before they've come round, they're thinking, shit, shit, I need to down tools. If we win, it's going to be really bad in 2022. We need to down tools. We need to lose this war. That's what they'd be thinking. But then they'd come round and think, ah, that's never, that's not going to happen. That won't happen. Don't be silly. But it has happened. And your ancestors would be disgusted that you are applauding or, or not booing the bending of the knee to a Marxist ideology. Because remember, Marxism is not far away from communism. And Stalin was a communist. Um, so the... Um, Yes, um, our, soul, our ancestors really wouldn't want um, Marxist uh, communism um, and they, they wouldn't want this, 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 they wouldn't want this world that is, 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 is happening right now and um, the Black Lives Matter movement is a big globalist um, organisation that was the catalyst for many of the bullshit um, going around today. So, um, Think about that the next time they boo the knee. Don't clap, don't be silent, and boo the knee-bending BS. Um, it's time to stand up and go up her. And, um, yes, as for Rochdale, like I've already mentioned, they only fielded one white player in the starting 11 last Tuesday. Um, on Saturday, um, yesterday, against Grimsby, they fielded four white players out of 11. That's still not good. This team is bottom of the league of the bottom division. This isn't a high-flying Premier League. Not that it's any not that it's any better that that would occur in a high-flying Premier League team like Crystal Palace, I believe, did the same on the opening day of the season. This is um, this is a this is a small town team. Um, it belongs to the fans. Um, now, many parts of Rochdale, the town, don't represent England anymore, but our football team has always represented England, and I don't like it one bit. And um, Robbie Stockdale is clearly the man in charge as the manager, and he's clearly pushing the knee bending, because we're seeing in League Two, um, Gillingham didn't bend the knee, Grimsby didn't bend the knee. Um, I don't know what happened in the first match. <coughs> uh, Oh, I don't know what happened in the first match against Crew Alexander, um, but um, Gillingham and Grimsby didn't take the knee, but um, Rochdale and the referee did take the knee in both of these matches. Anyone who's watching this thinking, oh, well, that's been minimised. Um, it's only been minimised in the Premier League. They're still doing it every week in the Football League, the English Football League Cup. And, um, yeah, Robbie Stockdale's clearly the man telling him to bend that knee Robbie Stockdale's the man who seems to um, seems to have gone woke this summer um, he's probably a big he's probably a massive fan of Black Lives Matter and he's probably a, um, one of these you know liberal left progressives um, because um, his recruitment this summer has been disgusting um, we clearly have been recruiting players from Nigeria or somewhere because um that, that should be a sackable offence on its own, only fielding one white person in the starting 11 at Rochdale AFC. Um, and it's all been caused by this... Um, they should never, ever have allowed politics into the national game football. They always said they wouldn't allow politics into the game. And they did that with Black Lives Matter, who are a political, Marxist, anti-white, anti-British ideology. And it's time for everyone to go up her and boo like Millwall. Boo the knee-bending BS.